Revenue, assets, negligence, debt, profit. Team, it's been another incredible year here at Business Productions, which means half of you are fired. We're disposable for a reason, sir. Like napkins. Now that half of our workforce has been eliminated, you know what that means. It never gets easier. We can finally afford this informational video on how companies make money. Hey y'all, Scott here. Quick, don't fire half your staff. Instead, consider releasing a game titled Madden 54. You'll be competition free for the next 30 years. I'm a creature of habit. Every year I do the same thing. I wake up, I say it, I buy Assassin's Creed. I wake up, I say it, I buy Assassin's Creed. I wake up, I say it, I buy Assassin's Creed. I wake up and say it, I buy Assassin's Creed. The simulation has crumbled. Some video game franchises release a brand new entry every single year. And why is that? Well, it's better than a calendar. Oh, it's March. In this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Yeah, let me change that. You know, it's somewhat comforting knowing you can always expect the same deal each and every year. Uh, God knows I can't medically. But oftentimes, less is more. When you have to wait a bit longer, it makes the release feel a hell of a lot more special. Plus, more time for the creators to work on it. It's a win-win. Lowe's. A corporation needs consistent revenue growth the same time every year. What are they gonna do? Oh God, I don't know. Wait. A new deck of sports every year. Hey, what's that? Annual releases, because damn, what am I doing in fall of 2054? I'm free. Well, thankfully Ubisoft will have me covered alongside a slew of other game companies releasing new games in the same series year after year without fail. Keyword being not out. It all comes crumbling down at some point, man. There's no way you can keep that schedule up forever, but it's interesting to see how we got to the points we get. Let's take a look at some video game franchises that pumped out yearly releases because... I'm getting cold. When I hear annual release, nothing fits the definition quite like old yell about sh Call of Duty, pushing out at least one new game every single year since 2003. How the hell do you do that? Well, you have the first main developer, then the second main developer, then another developer come in to assist the main developer, eventually becoming the third developer with all these outside folk developing your spin-off side titles until game development becomes so complicated you force every single one of your developers to work on Call of Duty. We got the guys who make Skylanders helping out. At that point, just have the developers call their mom. I need help. Call of Duty had a flow to its development. Infinity Ward would work on a game for two years, and so would Treyarch, meaning you could alternate between both for yearly releases. But as time passes, expectations rise. More content, better graphics. We need an extra year to develop all this, so in comes Sledgehammer Games to increase that two-year development to three. And that worked just fine until 2023 when they were finally going to take a breather and just release an expansion pack for the game that launched in 2022. Until they ran up to Sledgehammer Games at the last minute and told them to make it a full game. <sighs> That was a great idea. They just couldn't fathom a year without a full new Call of Duty release. I mean, think about how disappointed the fans would be. This sucks. Thank God they got Modern Warfare 3. This sucks. Everything about this game feels completely cobbled together, rushed out the door, an expansion pack turned full-blown title at the last minute, all to keep with tradition. But in the process, you ruin a legacy, reputation, expectations, the whole package. Now they've had troubles in the past sticking to a yearly schedule. Black Ops 4 didn't include a single player campaign. They said it was because single player was never part of the plan. This game was designed entirely around the multiplayer experiences because players didn't care about the campaign anyways. If you really believe that, why did every Call of Duty after this have a campaign? The yearly release feels like it devalues each experience before it. You see how much stuff is crammed into each of these titles, how many developers need to work on them, how these games are designed as if they're living, ongoing experiences, but they just end after nine months to make way for the next one. It just feels like a waste. Because say what you will about Call of Duty, but they can be truly some of the most AAA experiences in all of gaming. Uh, the presentation, amount of content, it puts so many other titles to shame. So to just throw that all away for another one less than a year later, is just so damn unnecessary. Do we truly need a new Call of Duty every year? Oh yeah, as long as my chair keeps getting uneven. But looking at the games as games and not revenue spikes, 
it's obvious these just don't make sense as annual releases anymore. Much like Assassin's Creed, which gave up the annual release schedule back in 2016. Why and how the hell did a new Assassin's Creed come out every year? Oh! This franchise felt milked to death, even compared to Call of Duty. At least there, you have different development teams each entry, six hour single player campaigns, plus online multiplayer. Felt a bit more digestible as a yearly thing, at least during the Xbox 360 days. Now, Assassin's Creed, 20 hour single player campaigns with multiple DLC expansions releasing into the next year with online multiplayer as well. You're playing this every year? Done. Finally! From 2009 to 2015, there was a mainline Assassin's Creed each and every holiday, and for the most part, they delivered exactly what was expected, which was comforting, yeah, but man, there was practically no time available to evolve the franchise in meaningful ways. There was time, however, to evolve it in dog sh ones. 2014, Assassin's Creed Unity nearly single-handedly proved that yearly releases were actively hurting the series. No. So people are already tired of the constant games and you put one out that doesn't work? We'll get them next year! This was the M. Obviously, this wasn't gonna work for the franchise moving forward, prompting Ubisoft to take more time with each entry, returning in 2017 with Assassin's Creed Origins, which definitely felt like that new step the series needed to take. I mean, comparing this to Assassin's Creed Syndicate is like night and day. This isn't bad, but this was isn't bad nine. Origins was a breath of fresh air for Assassin's Creed. The extra year of development allowed them to create a far more detailed world with deep, richer action RPG gameplay, which they followed up with two more entries over a period of six years. God, but there's so much longer now, and we have to wait so much more between releases. Gosh, I just wish we're, we're right back where we started. You don't know you'll miss something until it's gone, man. Assassin's Creed Mirage in 2023 was a return to the traditional formula prior to Origins, the formula that was used in nearly 10 consecutive entries. Yeah, oh man, we need more of that. To be fair, these Assassin's Creed's were damn bloated. I mean, 60 hours? You could do so much else with that time, like procrastinate. Maybe later. I feel that Ubisoft didn't really know what to do with the extended development time other than just make these games as long as possible. Hey, they knew how to pump out a new Assassin's Creed every year. You give them three years to make one and they'll just make it three times as long. Moran showcases how sometimes Bigger isn't always better. Some people may prefer when things were more simple, though to expect even a simpler experience every holiday? I mean, much like Call of Duty, oh, even more so. Whenever a new Assassin's Creed would drop, I felt that severely undermined and undervalued last year's. And why did it have to be that way? What the hell about stealth action adventure games set in historical time screams, I know what I'm doing for the next six years. Ubisoft made the right call pumping the brakes here while also acknowledging that, yeah, while the series has evolved, that didn't negate the original style. It's good to have both, just not under the pressure of releasing every single year. Ubisoft has Just Dance for that anyways. Every year since its inception, at least one new Just Dance has released because, well, this one doesn't have Mambo number five. Awesome, uh, but this one doesn't have Boogie Wonderland. Great but this one doesn't have Mambo number five. Just Dance is the type of annual release you can understand damn well how and why they put it out every single year. Now, if they took a year off, I'd be genuinely concerned. Of course, you need to put out a new Just Dance every fall because you need new songs. I don't wanna be stuck with Bring on this year's track list, plus some extra gameplay additions and or enhancements. But let's be honest here, for the most part, what set these games apart from each other was the year they were released in, which is definitely why they started getting named after them. Or there's a few thousand entries I missed. But whenever you see a game like this that's practically a glorified expansion pack, I think we've all had the thought cross our minds. Hey, why not just release a content update for the previous title? Well, Ubisoft listened to us them. Starting with 2023 edition, Just Dance no longer received a traditional physical release. Instead, you'd get a download code to redeem a pack of songs in the Just Dance app. So 
this is no longer an annual release. It's just new songs are added to a Just Dance hub with a bundle of them being sold at retail every year. You know, I'm not sure if this was the best move considering most of the Just Dance audience looks like this. Okay, so three years prior in the UK, the Wii version of Just Dance was the second best-selling version. The Wii version! Then three years later, you're gonna ask that same audience to do all this? This is for sure a sound concept for the future of Just Dance, but when you don't do a physical release, you cut two platforms from your support, you remove major features from previous games since this is sort of starting from scratch, you require an internet connection, and you charge a full $60 when previous games launched at 50, what did you expect to happen? More! But hey, I gotta give Ubisoft credit for taking the logical step most other annual franchises are too afraid of. If your games are glorified song packs anyways, why not just do this? Of course, the logical step for some is boiling water on the crotch for Just Dance. But you gotta admit, this feels like the natural evolution for these things. I may not be a fan of live service games, but they do make sense for some titles. Specifically, Spider-Man. Sports games. Now, when you talk to those who actually play these things and ask what's the difference between FIFA 22 and FIFA 23, they'll genuinely say, graphically, FIFA 23 is better across the board. Better animations, there's new gameplay elements like power shots, these are both FIFA 21. Without little changes outside of the updated players and rosters, one may ask, why not just have one game you evolve and make additions to through updates and paid DLC? One may also ask you to go f yourself and spend 70 every year. Well, at least they asked. This is how these sports games have always been, so it's hard to imagine them releasing in any other fashion, but just for a second, picture a game simply titled Madden NFL that releases like any other Madden game, but for the next three years, it's updated constantly. Then when the time is right, you release Madden NFL 2. With completely reworked gameplay, enhanced visuals, I mean, it would be a brand new experience. See? Nah, instead, a new Madden game every year for 30 plus years. It's pretty impressive they've been able to keep at it this long, especially when other sports games need to take a year or two off to catch their breath, and when some of these games are at the quality they are. I mean, Madden 2004 won Game of the Year at the Spike Video Game Awards. Madden 2005 won Best Song in a Game for American Idiot by Green Day. <laughs> this was like the best damn franchise of all time. But that was just the cherry on top. The Madden 08 on top was God, I love Madden. Nowadays, it seems like the franchise is in this perpetual state of 60s on Metacritic. Uh, they're more concerned with putting it out every year rather than genuinely improving the core game. So if the game's so bad now, why do they keep pumping them out? I don't know. Now, at one point or another, EA has annualized a handful of their franchises. Need for Speed was every year for a bit there. So was Medal of Honor, Skate, My Sims, so Hasbro Family Game Night. It's fall again, bitch. But series like Battlefield are roughly biennial releases, occurring every other year most of the time. Doesn't help things. That's the schedule many franchises were on. Seemed like you could always expect a new entry two years later, especially during the Xbox 360 days. Well, if there's annual and biannual, what the hell would Guitar Hero and Rock Band be? A spree. But I want to talk a franchise that many didn't even realize was annual. One that feels like we only get new games every millennia. One that is considered to be one of the most revered series in the whole medium. August already? It's The Legend of Zelda, the yearly franchise. Starting in 2013, there was a Zelda game released each and every year until 2022. Now, we are stretching things here with spin-offs, remakes, re-releases, the works, which, hell, does 2012 count since we got Zelda 1 and 2 on the 3DS eShop? 2018 barely counts since all we got there was Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, but hey, for nearly 10 years, Nintendo had some kind of Zelda release annually, and goddamn, not even Mario Party did that. That's the Nintendo franchise I immediately think of when annual releases are brought up, but look at this. So the first three entries entries were one right after another, but they launched a year later outside of Japan, meaning between Mario Party 3 and 4, there was a gap in Japan, but not over here, so does this count? How about the carnival games, do those count too? Regardless, Mario Party comes out in bursts. We get four straight years of nothing but, one year off, back again, five years gone, Mario Party 9. Explain this gap in your resume. Actually, just flat out explain the resume. Starting with Mario Party 9 though, we got annual releases of Mario Party 
news at the very least until 2018. Yeah, if we want to count getting Mario Party 10 announced in 2014, you might as well count that moment in 2006 when I said the word Mario Party. Damn, this series just won't stop! But every series needs to at some point, even if it's just for a second. But forcing yourself to release something at the same time over and over again gives you no time to improve or evolve your craft. You're just gonna end up pumping out the same stuff over and over and over again, and you can end up resenting your work. You no longer look at it as a creative project, rather, as something you have to get done so you can get to work on the next thing. Yes, consistency can be great, and it can be so exciting looking forward to that new release at the same time you're always used to. But I think the health and quality of a brand is more important than rushing something out just to say that you did. Annual releases aren't inherently bad, not at all, but they can become that if you don't just pump the brakes sometimes. Realize that while these are products, they're also art. And if you start looking at them as just products, consumers are gonna start looking at them like that as well and eventually really stop caring about these series. It's all about balance. These are businesses at the end of the day, but they're businesses in the first place because the quality and integrity as these games is art. And if you're not willing to see that, stop! You heard the videotape! Everybody, let's put together something special! Something we're all proud of! Something we're making because we want to! Where's my creative leads? You fired them. Whoa! What a dream! Hey y'all, Scott here.